We've had the Starlink in motion high performance dish mounted on our hardtop for over three weeks now, side by side with our standard RV dish. And what we want to do is be able to give you some of the preliminary performance results. Uh, and the goal is to be able to give some real world observations for those of you that may be contemplating buying, you know, the RV standard Starlink or this in motion dish. Or if you're also, you also know, already have a standard RV Starlink and you're thinking maybe about upgrading. In 2019, we sold everything to realize our dream of living, working, and cruising full time on our boat. I'm John, this is Carlin, and this is our home, the Elliott. In our performance observations, we're going to cover the installation, the terrain type, the speed test configuration that we use to create a reasonable level of consistency between the two dishes so that our results are apples to apples. Uh, then we'll cover the results in the two areas that we found most relevant when we think about performance that affects our internet connection experience on our boat as, as full-time liveaboards and out cruising all the time. Uh, the first one is the familiar upload and download test speeds that most of us associate with performance. And the second is going to be the visibility, uh, the impacts, the number of dropouts that can be disruptive for highly sensitive uh, internet applications like uh, video conferencing apps and to a lesser degree video streaming. Uh, there's a lot of buffering that they've built into video streaming. So unless the connection's terrible, uh, those usually will work. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the differences between the hardware that we used for both of the dishes in this test and which one might make the most sense for different types of boaters, uh, we'll provide a link above to a previous video that we made that might be helpful in that. So let's jump right into it. So the installation. We have both of these dishes mounted five feet apart on the boat's hard top, and they have eight degrees of inclination forward uh, to the west. Both of them are using the standard Starlink Wi-Fi routers to make sure that, again, we're creating consistency to the connection, so it's an apples and apples test. The reason we picked eight degrees of inclination is because the high-performance Starlink dish comes with a wedge mount, uh, and, and that's how they have it set up to be able to shed water and snow and hail and those types of things. So we just wanted to make the two dishes basically equally uh, configured to be able to, to evaluate them. The train. We're up here in Roach Harbor in Washington State. So the slip that we're in has obstructions at the horizon. So we have uh, an eight degree obstruction to the north of a tree line that's about 295 yards away. We have 19 degrees of obstruction to the east, which is about 145 yards away. And then we have 13 degrees of obstruction to the south, and that's about 165 yards away. Uh, and then to the west, about a mile away, we have a two degree obstruction. So really no obstruction whatsoever to the west. We have a mast on the Elliott that's 22 degrees due east, about eight feet behind the dishes. Uh, and there's also about 15 masts from other boats. They range from about 12 to 36 degrees from the horizon. And they're about 13 to 100 yards away uh, surrounding us, predominantly to the north and the south. So for the speed test configuration, we're using speed tests from Ukula, uh, and we selected San Juan Cable as the test servers for consistency of the results. Now, jumping into the actual test results. The first thing that we'll start with is visibility. First, we look at the qualitative results uh, for visibility between the two dishes. And the way that we do this, uh, we just basically set them up for 12 hours and let them collect obstruction data. Uh, and it re represents visually in the Starlink application what that looks like. So the RV standard, which is that 11 inch by 20 inch dishy, and it has 100 degrees of visibility to the skyline, uh, showed three obstructions and a decent overall visibility to the skyline. Now, as you might expect, the high performance in motion dish, which is physically twice the size as a standard RV uh, Starlink, which has even wider visibility to the skyline of 140 degrees, this one resulted in no observable obstructions. And as you can see, it actually has better coverage as well because of that wider visibility. 
so this resulted in quantitative results of over double the dropouts for the standard RV, exceeding two seconds when compared to the high performance in motion dish. Now, why a seven dropouts on the standard RV dish isn't terrible, um, these would be noticeable uh, on, a, on a video conference call, especially in that those two that ended up being in the 15 to 19 second range. So we do look forward to getting the high performance dishy out to some of the tight anchorages uh, that, that created dropouts for our standard RV dish about every 10 to 15 minutes when we were up in Desolation Sound. Now there's no cell coverage up there, so it was extremely disruptive. So if we're able to reduce dropouts by 70%, like the results we found here, uh, the high performance dish is definitely gonna be worth it. So let's jump into the speed tests. The standard RV dishy delivered some performance. It was on par with the average th unthrottled results uh, for download speeds at 64 megabits per second and upload speeds of about four megabits per second. As you might expect, the RV high performance in motion that's twice the size of the standard RV dish clocked in higher speeds of 80 meg per second for download and six meg per second for uploads. Jitter was materially the same and packet loss was actually uh, considerably lower on the high performance dish. And if jitter doesn't sound familiar, maybe this will ring a bell. Never good on a conference call. This is a <laughs> Over the course of the week, uh, we continued to do some performance tests uh, to make sure that those weren't just anomalies. And we really found that they were extremely consistent in not only the dropout ratios that we saw in visibility from obstructions, but as well as the performance between the two dishes when we think about upload and download speeds. The top performance that we saw from the standard RV dish was download of 157 megabits and upload of 9.7 megabits. Now the high performance dish, not surprisingly, we saw 220 megabits per second and upload of 18.2. I will point out this is when there was absolutely no congestion and where there is a lot of congestion in peak times, we saw download speeds of 10 megabits sometimes and upload of two or three. So we also had a chance to do some tests where we combine the two Starlink internet connections. For those of you that are unfamiliar with WAN bonding and or something they call WAN smoothing, so this is just a technical approach that enables you to combine two or more WAN or internet connections so that those connections might have a lot of dropouts or performance issues, but if you combine them together, you actually get higher performance and you reduce or eliminate dropouts. So this type of implementation that we have on the Elliot enables us to integrate various cell data plans uh, in areas that have high levels of congestion for our Starlinks and conversely integrate the two Starlinks when we're in areas that have no cell coverage. Now, if Starlink has a disruption that affects both dishes, uh, WAN bonding and WAN smoothing isn't gonna help. I mean, if the service is down, it, it affects both of them, but it's pretty rare when we see that. In practice, we pause these two Starlink services um, when we're in areas that have really good cell coverage because it's just cheaper on a monthly basis to pay for those plans and just use this WAN bonding to get really solid performance as well as no perceivable dropouts when we're trying to do work from the boat. Now, when we get out of cell coverage, uh, we'll reactivate the two Starlinks and we'll be able to continue work as we cruise full time. Those areas just used to be off limits to us unless we were willing to take time off. So I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, go ahead and click subscribe and that little bell if you're interested in more information. The next one that we'll be talking about is the Elliot's PepWave internet implementation. Uh, we'll talk about the antennas, access points, the cellular router, and all the integrated hotspots that we have there as well. Now, if all this sounds interesting, but a bit overwhelming, we have found uh, that mobilemusthave.com has really good video tutorials and equipment reviews that help us understand what was even feasible or possible uh, given different budgets or what our cruising requirements were. So those have some of the best prices we've found on the internet as well. We'll provide you a link down below in the description if that is useful for you. In the meantime, safe sailing, peace.